Oh, this is nasty. Oh, son of a bitch. Oh my so, god. Yeah. I'm pretty sure this is going to be hands down the best Jeep video that's ever been produced. Probably. I mean. Hey everyone, welcome back to Part Out where we talk about off-road rigs and accessories. Today we've got a 2010 Jeep Wrangler JK Rubicon. These Jeeps are dropping in price to that really affordable point where, you know, average people like myself can go out and just buy one and then fix them up. But we're going to kind of walk in to see what it takes to actually get one of these cheaper Rubicons and bring it to life to a full trail worthy Jeep. So let's go ahead and get to work. Making all sorts of mess. All right, so after about a month of shopping around and stuff, just seeing where the prices were at for the Rubicons and stuff, we've been seeing that they're kind of sitting anywhere from ten thousand dollars all the way up to about eighteen twenty-ish for the higher mileage ones. But we got kind of lucky. We found this one. This was a, an AEV build. Managed to negotiate with the owner. We got this thing down to ten thousand dollars, and we we took it home. So we have it here in the shop. As you can see, it's got some. Uh, a little bit of rust. This is a Midwest Jeep and that's pretty common kind of thing. So uh, we're gonna kind of inspect it a little bit further from everything. <laughs> Did you just fart? I did that. <laughs> By the way, that's patina. Oh, this is patina. Some parts of the country they call that shitty, shitty bang bang. Stop <laughs> shitting our pants, guys. Did you fart? <laughs> uh, just really clapped out as far as the suspension and everything goes. And so I'm gonna be looking forward to Go ahead and rip that all out. We're gonna shop around, see what cool lift kits we can put on this thing. Clean up the rest of the underbody, you know, make sure we stop the rust from where it's at now. We probably won't, but you know, whatever, we try. This is called PB Blaster. Uh, on sale, these gigantic mega cans on sale, two for 10 of Nards right now, by the way. This eats rust on all the bolts and hardware we have. Again, if you've never been to the Midwest, you wouldn't know. We call this PB Blaster. Your mom likes Menards. So far, what we've got going on here is we are just gonna do some general maintenance. So we, uh, you know, we got about 182-ish thousand miles on this Jeep. So we did a, went ahead to the plugs and wires, got those taken care of. Uh, next, we're just doing uh, pretty much all new brake setup. So we're doing uh, pads, rotors. Uh, we noticed the brake lines were leaking, so we're gonna replace those as well. Be nice to have a Jeep that stops every once in a while. From there, we're actually gonna go ahead and inspect this further. We did notice there was some transmission fluid, so we're gonna inspect what's going on there and uh, see if we can fix what's going on uh, under the Jeep. Other than that, we don't really see any leaks, which is kind of weird for a Jeep like this, so. This is the liner for your e-brake. That's great. Well. So this isn't going to work right away today. <laughs> It'll be a thing. So the brakes are proving to be a bit tricky right now. There's a lot of a lot of bolts snapping. We might have to go find some new calipers for the rear. But other than that, I think we're looking pretty good on overall cost. I mean, I think we're in probably about a thousand, thousand bucks right now just in getting general maintenance done, which all in all is actually not that bad. So this is the caliper slide pin had seized in the caliper bracket uh, because Michigan. And uh, so rather than assume we needed a new caliper bracket, I am fighting my way towards getting the slide pin out so that we can just go buy some new hardware. So we're making our, what, 15th trip to the parts store this week? Yes. Yeah, well, so we're just finding miscellaneous little things. So we got 99% all the way through on the brake job for this thing. And then the very last caliper, uh, we, we tried our best to salvage everything. Just awful. Um, so we're, we're going to the parts store. We're gonna see if we can find a, a replacement hardware kit. Should be fairly easy. It's a very common part to get. All right, so we got the parts. Life's good. We're gonna go back to the shop. Hopefully get the brakes finished. Plenty of, you know, rust. Oh, son of a bitch. You good back there, man? This is the best video ever. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh, this is nasty. There's so much shit under here. Yeah. We found a fire extinguisher under the seat, and uh, I don't know what size fire this is going to put out. For visual comparison, proper fire extinguisher? That's that fire extinguisher. 
I mean, like, you just go ahead and... The cigarette lighter stayed lit for too long in there. That's it. Just put it out. That's it. Yeah. Look how gross this is. There's all sorts of stuff. I mean, you get what you get with a $10,000 Jeep, I guess. Although 10000 still seems like a lot of money. What do you think, Justin? For a Rubicon JK? No, I mean, I call it, well, in this particular case, extremely well bought. I mean, yeah, JK-wise, it's a good deal. I mean... Is $10,000 a lot of money to me? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's... <laughs> you know? For, a, for a, a weekend toy, I think we're looking pretty good. I, but I, I think most of it's just dead skin and dander, so I think you're good. Oh, well that makes me feel a lot more sanitary. With JKs and stuff, I mean, it's literally like the most accessorable. There's a lot of accessories you can put on the Jeep JK and it's really cool. Oh my so, God. Okay, I guess that's a good indicator how things are going in here. People, wash your vehicles every once in a while. Clean them out. This thing is caked with a bunch of just gross stuff. But hey, it's got leather seats. <laughs> it says Jeep right there. Kind of decided to make an executive decision early on. I wasn't planning on doing this already, but we're gonna just go ahead and rip all the carpet out of this Jeep. Yeah, if I'm being honest with you, Nate, your bumper looks about as bad as it did before. Well, you look kind of bad too. Yeah. Almost as bad as this carpet. God, it stinks. It's so bad. All right, as you can see, we've got a nice, clean, silver floor. That also still has to get vacuumed. Oh, flag, flag, flag. What the f***? Hey, we have a good run on this. Hey, we're recording over here, man. Huh? We're <laughs> recording over here. <laughs> over there watching the Ohio State game. <laughs> Okay, so my mic was off here, and I can only assume that I am saying something along the lines of I'm not qualified to be operating this grinder wheel on the Jeep. And uh, also probably trying to justify anything here about how much rust is on this Jeep and that this was still a good purchase. But really, I'm just sanding down some of the rust to do a quick spray paint job on this bumper just to give it a quick cosmetic fix until we're able to send it out for sandblasting and powder coating. You can't have uh, dirty garbage, so I'm going to make this garbage look pretty up here. I'll be honest with you, it, it's looking worse. My God. <laughs> I've, been, I've been kind of known as uh, this generation's, uh, I don't know any artist names. Just... You are not the Charlie Daniels of the paint can. This is the craziest thing, folks. I just took a 10 millimeter off of this. I went to put it in the 10 millimeter slot, an extra one has appeared. Is this a new this thing? This is 2020. No, I don't know. This is scaring the crap out of me right now because I definitely took the 12 point out, which goes over here, as you can see, an extra 10 millimeter appeared. One of the things that people think about when they're looking at older Jeeps, especially the first gen JKs, is the 3.8 liter V6. Is it good? Is it bad? Am I really taking a big gamble here when I'm buying one? Personally, in the back of my head, yeah, there's a bit of a gamble, but at the same time, really comb the engine over. If it's you know in good shape, I think you got a pretty decent engine to work with. I mean, Justin, you know a little bit more about this engine than I do. And I yeah. Think so when Jeep went to the JK, you know they, they got rid of the tried and true uh, you know four liter straight six. Been yeah. been in Jeep you know for since the beginning of time, right? Yep. And so it was a ridiculously, you know, just perfect engine. They, they ran like a sewing machine, ran her. So they go into the 3.8. My mom's calling. Okay. <laughs> so they go into the 3.8, basically the caravan engine, 3,800 caravan engine. So the trick with this engine is no, it's not a big powerhouse. Do I see major mechanical flaws in it? No, not really. Um, you know, Good maintenance, maintaining it, you know, it, it's gonna last. This one's got 180,000. I did a quick tune up on it the other day. The engine is, is clean and clear. It's got a clean bill of health. This thing's gonna go 250, 300,000 miles. It's not gonna be an issue. It's not the torque monster or the sewing machine or the powerhouse. It, it just is an engine. It will motivate the Jeep. We're gonna make up for the rest with tires, gears, and suspension. That's, that's where you're gonna make up for it. That's how it's gonna be better than, than another Jeep does what it's supposed to do. It runs and moves this down the, down the road. And, so uh, when we first started the engine up, I mean, this thing's been sitting in a field or in, in a driveway for probably about two or three years, maybe even more from the looks of a few things, but it fired right up, it drove, it was a little rough, but I mean, I think once we finish bleeding the brakes and stuff, we'll go in, see if it runs, and I think it'll be a pretty solid engine. 
It'd be nice just to put some miles on it. Yeah. I mean, the poor Jeep would love it. The, the tires you have aren't going to enjoy it, but the Jeep would love to get some yeah. miles on it. Yeah, this, this Jeep's going to need some new tires because the, the ones that we found on it. Uh. All right, let's go to work. So we're going to go ahead and... Oh, whoa. Well. So... Okay. So we got a little rust here on the white housing. Just a smith, it's gonna need a little bit of hot glue or something. We can go ahead and that'll, that'll fix it. I mean, the light looks like it's in good shape though. But I mean, other than that, I mean, I think, I think we're at about a, you know, seven out of 10 quality here on durability. Let's see what the other one does. The other one is stuck. I mean, she's, it's fucking mint. It's like to the point where you want it to. Yep. Okay. So my goal, oh my gosh, I just got it right. <laughs> this thing was literally just rusted in there. It was awesome. This is in the yard. Oh, that's mine. Door Snapple. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, this here is a Diet Snapple and um, I don't, I don't think they're sponsoring this video by any means, were they? Just put it down. All right. AEV had this uh, high lift mount jack thing with uh, a land anchor of some sort, and they had it bolted up to here where I was able to find even more rust. So I managed to snap a few bolts, and she came off and, you know, cut my finger. But, I mean, other than that, I think we're, we're, we're cooking with some spice. What does that even mean? Gas. Cooking with gas? Yeah. So this this Jeep has been sitting out in the field in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan for a couple of years, and we're just we're figuring out all sorts of things. The paint's kind of burnt a little bit in certain spots. This is a an original high lift jack that they had on there, and I'm trying my best to open it up, but it's all kind of crusted up together. So I'm gonna see what condition it's in. Rusty. Look at that, we found ourselves a high lift jack. Kind of rusty. Kind of matches the Jeep a little. Oh, oh no, no, my God, he did it again? We only got 14 now. He dropped it. Oh. He fucking dropped it. God. <laughs> he fucking dropped that it. That was their one chance to. I hate it when people greet me. Well, hey, don't be saying <laughs> hi over here. And then I have to say hi back. And then it's, how's your day? I'm like, can you just let me know what you want? Small talk is so overrated. Underneath the Jeep, the only leak we were able to find, because it was pretty wet under here, but it looks like we're just going to do a transmission pan, and that's about it. So that's pretty good news for us. I feel like I, no, no. We focus. We keep our eyes up here. Why don't we? Are on camera. It sounds like we keep our eyes elsewhere when we're off camera. <laughs> Doing a great job at shooting the cam video there, Derek. The one thing I'm definitely noticing under here that this Jeep did not have a, uh, it didn't come, I can't talk. Didn't have is uh, an EVAP canister skid plate. Uh, that's gonna be a definite need um, when we go out and take this thing on the trail. So we'll have to go online, shop around, and see what what looks good, what's strong. I'll try a Barnes four wheel drive because they usually have a lot of good products. So give those guys a call. We'll get this canister taken care of because if you puncture a hole in that, trust me, your Jeep will be dead in the tracks. Nice to just pop a hole in it and let it drain rather than have to fight it. You know what I mean? Yeah, let's do it. This is gonna take about a month. We'll start here. Pan up. That's gonna look good. Actually, it does. It gets real bright and dark. If you show up, that's pretty neat. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure this is going to be hands down the best Jeep video that's ever been produced. Probably. I mean, in, I don't, in Justin's garage. In Justin's garage. I just don't see how it's going to get any better than this. The quality of the content we're shooting today is. It's the first ever. I don't know how I'm going to reach those bolts on over the uh, exhaust. I'm not sure. That's not Justin's problem. I was, I was thinking the same thing. I was like, I don't know, man. You I don't know how you're going to do that. You go ahead and drip on me one last time, didn't you? Yeah.
So far, my initial thoughts on buying a cheap first-gen JK Rubicon are pretty good. Nobody's gonna have the same experience when shopping for something like this. There's simply too many variables to take into account. But with this Jeep, however, we tried our best to learn as much owner history as possible. With this being a 2010 Rubicon and being a single owner, we gathered as much info as we could get. If you're tempted to go this route and buy the cheapest JK Rubicon you can, do not expect much when you're going into something like this. You're gonna need probably a couple grand in repairs before you'll get to the fun stuff with off-road accessories. Initially, you'll wanna do all the fluids, stuff like the engine oil, trans flush, diff fluid, transfer case, and then hit the plugs and wires for a full tune-up. Brakes are always gonna be at the top of the list to repair, and upgrading the brake lines is definitely something you're going to wanna do as well, because brake lines that are that old are pretty much gonna be on the verge of rusting out if it's a Midwest style Jeep. We ended up upgrading the brake lines to the BDS suspension heavy duty extended brake lines. Not only are they gonna give us more travel when we lift the Jeep up with a bigger lift kit, but they're gonna give us more peace of mind for all the durability that we'll gain from those brake lines. For right now, let's see if the Jeep fires up. Good stuff. Jeep's running, wheel's spinning. You're in first, first? First, first. Okay, go up to second, go up to second. What's that noise? Oh, just nice Jeep. <laughs> We're wrapped up for the day today. The Jeep has uh, pretty much all the general maintenance done that we can do on it. Uh, next, we're just gonna go ahead and get it out on the road, make sure everything runs just fine. Um, stay tuned later on. We're gonna go ahead and work on some axles next. Uh, we're gonna get a nice uh, lift kit on here as well as some bigger tires. So we're gonna do some shopping, figure out what works best. Um, yeah, we'll see you guys next time.